Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly update, going over what uh, we talked to with the kids this week. You know, last week we talked about Gideon, and this week I really felt strongly to uh, go after the story of David, and we, we had a lot of fun with it. We compared and contrasted. With Gideon, I talk, we talked about how he was a coward when God found him, and then God spoke who he really was, mighty man of God. And then Gideon had to go through the process of believing that. Often Gideon had to ask for signs for every single thing God wanted him to do to, to know for sure, to feel secure in that. But God met him in that place, which was pretty amazing. A lot of us forget that God is more than willing to meet us where we're at. But talking about David, we talked about how David was the opposite. He was very strong and brave and courageous from a young age. You know, David was a teenager when he fought Goliath, which is pretty hard to believe if you actually think about it. He was also anointed king as a teenager. So we talked about why would David be so strong and courageous versus Gideon, who was closer to 30 when he was discovered, who by all accounts should have been braver. What was the difference? Well, David was a shepherd. He was out in the fields all the time. And during that time, David didn't waste his time. He spent that time with the Lord. You know, we think maybe sitting around sometimes and basking in the sun, watching the sheep, enjoying the outdoors. Uh, it wasn't that his job was always easy, but that is mostly what a shepherd would have been doing. We think of that maybe as not working too much, but if you're spending time with the Lord, you're growing. Well, David was growing in that time. So he got so intimate with the Lord that he knew to fear nothing but the Lord. And the Lord in that time would lead him as he fought bears and lions and killed them both. So by the time Goliath came around, David already knew what he was capable of with the Lord behind him. So we talked about how the difference in somebody who would have been seen to have known the Lord being a, an Israelite in Gideon, but was still a coward because he didn't have a relationship with God and how he had to process that versus some way who'd been processing that and growing that from a young age. Well, then from there, David gets all this favor from the king, but yet he still is not king yet. It's going to take a while. So he runs from Saul. Saul tries to kill him. And we discussed how sometimes God's call in your life can come early and you need to hold on to that promise because there's going to be a trial ground. Well, David had to go out in the wilderness and hide for the better part of 15 years. He was running from Saul. During that time, God was equipping him to be a good king. So the call had come early. David believed it. And we also talked about how did David feel hopelessness at times? Did he doubt God sometimes when his, all his circumstances were against him? And the answer is yes. The Psalms clearly tell us that David struggled with a lot of what he was going through. But the difference is, is that David, as he processed it, always would finish with, but Lord, you're good and I trust you. He always came back around after his process. And in that, God was able to trust him. So that when David was finally 30, Saul died. David, by no means of David, he died and God was able to give him the kingdom. One other cool thing we talked about was during that time, David, like Gideon, had an army of 300 men. And the, the army followed David and they had all these exploits going out. And David in that time was actually winning the hearts of the people so that even though Saul was in more power, just like the Midianites, the people were coming along to David. The favor was growing with David just as it was growing with Gideon. And by the time the breakthrough came, God, uh, both Gideon and David saw the favor of God break through in their lives and the promises of God come to fruition. But the fun thing we did as a comparison was that David was kind of like Robin Hood, running around with his merry men, Although we don't know if they were merry, we know they were mighty. And he's doing that. And it was, it was a neat picture to see the kids kind of their, their light go off in their head as they realized, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, we know the story of Robin Hood so well. And I wanted to equip that with David. A lot of people don't talk about the inner, in-between point of David's life, between King and Goliath. And so it was a real fun journey to go on that. But the main thing we talked about was perseverance. If you have God's ear, if you have his favor, you hold on to those promises. And if you hold on to them, no matter what God throws at you, or sorry, not what God throws at you, no matter what life throws at you, God will show himself faithful. 
And eventually, since David held on, he came to become the great king of Israel, that God promised his kingdom would last forever, which was eventually fulfilled in Jesus, who uh, the lineage of Jesus actually tracks back to David. So it's a really neat way to show how David was so favored by God that his kingdom lasted forever through our risen King Jesus. Anyways, kids are awesome as always. Uh, God bless y'all, and we'll see you next week.